Do you struggle with not knowing how to utilize the minimap? Do you not know when you should flank, rotate, push out? Do you not know whether you should be first or second contact in a crossfire? And do you not know the exact optimal entry pathing, whether you are attacking a site or you're a defender and you're actually retaking the site? I'm going to answer all those questions for you guys in this video. And if you don't know who I am, I'm Kapeki and I've been a Radiant coach since episode one. And I've coached thousands of students and helped hundreds of students hit Immortal and Radiant. And this video is taking straight Straight from the lesson that I taught inside my eight week coaching program, where we help players rank up 500 RR in eight weeks guaranteed or your money back. And so this video is for those of you guys who can't afford to pay for coaching, but if you are interested and you can't afford to invest in yourself, then you can use the link down below to book a free call with me or one of my coaches to see if you would be a good fit. Let's start with map control. When it comes to map control, there is macro and micro positioning. And so first let's break down the macro. Macro is top down view of what's happening on the map. Uh, whereas micro positioning, you can think of it as positioning relative to like your teammates, crossfires, um, that sort of stuff, like getting trades. With macro, you're reading the whole map, like how many people are on a certain site, uh, could someone be flanking? Where are the enemies at right now? Where are they most likely to hit? Like that's macro, okay? You're trying to read where all 10 people are, whereas micro, you're just thinking about where you're positioned relative to the angles that your teammates are holding. And so to be able to understand map control, we first need to understand how to utilize the minimap really effectively. So let's first talk about when to use the minimap. You want to look at it before the round starts. When you see the kill feed pop up, when you're rotating or flanking, every time comms are made and you aren't expecting an immediate gunfight, when you're waiting for contact from your teammate or utility, and lastly, when you're in cover after using utility or while you're reloading. Okay? So before the round starts, you want to see whether or not there's gaps in your defense. When you're attacking, uh, if you can look at the mini map, you should be able to see if a jet is just trying to go to one part of the map by herself. So you should try to double up with her uh, because that's how you get value out of her in ranked. If you see the kill feed pop up, you'll know exactly when and where your teammate or the enemy died. And based on that, you can figure out a lot of information on the map. When you're rotating or flanking, you should know when to speed up your rotation, when to slow down your rotation or your flank. When comms are made one window, one window, one window. and you aren't expecting a gunfight, you can also quickly see what's happening on the map and paint a picture when you're waiting for contact from your teammate or utility. So if your teammate has first contact or second contact, uh, which is something I'm going to expand upon later, that'll also let you know if you should tuck in. And if you are tucked in, it'll help you know when to swing out. It'll help you know when to throw out your flash or dart, etc. using your utility. And then when in cover after using utility or while you're reloading, you're not doing anything. You're just behind cover. So while you're in cover, you can at least figure out if your teammates are fighting someone, you know exactly where to pre-aim once you're done reloading. So this is an example of Durka. Uh, and I chose this video because <laughs> instead of the mini map, <laughs> he's blessed us with his face. And we can also take a look at his eyes to see when he's looking at the mini map. They will not change this. I don't know why. I think that was, I guess. Nice. It's all my... Let's go! One mid. Yeah, so every time he gets a kill, or he, he gets he gets a kill on the guy peeking long, he gets in cover, he looks at the minimap to see where all the fights are happening. When he's scaling up long, he's also uh, aiming here. He doesn't take a look at the minimap, but once he gets behind pillar, he can take a look again because he's behind cover. And then after he gets a second kill, he's able to see that the rest of the teammates are fighting uh, towards mid and like all the enemies have pretty much been spotted so he j he's just able to leave okay and just knife out go into spawn he sees a spike and then gets a kill flanking and rotation if there are this these are just general rules to follow the thing about patterns that i've recognized in game that you guys can start to spot as well if you are defending and on the attacker team, you see three to four enemies spotted, including the Sentinel and Smokes, then it's probably a five man rush. So in this case, pushing their flank to contain them is ideal or fast rotating to help your teammates uh, is also good if you are nearby. OK, so if you're farther away, so let's say if they're hitting a site on Ascent, if you're far away, then it might be good to actually push out a B main and flank them. Or you can actually uh, you can it depends, too, because what what if they're doing a split push versus a five man hit? OK, well, if it's a three to four enemies and it's most likely just a five man rush, then if you're playing on B, it might be good to actually go through market 
and then just go cat and then fight all their teammates so you can pinch them. But if you're not sure and they're pulling slower, it might be good to push out a B and just continue. If you only see one enemy and it's the Sentinel or Smokes, then it's most likely just a Lurker and the real hit is going to be on the other side of the map. And lastly, if you fought a guy on C site and now he's spotted on A, the enemies are most likely to hit the A site. Okay? This is just common patterns we see in rank. And this is something I expanded upon for the minimap, but using the information on the minimap like your teammates positions and sight lines can help you decide when and where to use your utility and when to peek the enemy out of cover, right? out of smokes, behind cover, etc. So now that we know how to utilize the minimap, when to use it and um, know how to uh, get in the habit of utilizing our minimap, let's talk about map control on the macro level. So what is map control? Map control is all about vision. Vision that you and your teammates have with vision cones and also vision and barriers that your utility provides. So this is stuff like darts, drones, uh, sage wall, cypher trip, unless you know people can TP through it with like Omen or Yoru. Those are some things to keep in mind, but that's what map control is about. And you and your teammates must rotate or position yourselves to establish as much map control around the map. And why do we do this? Why map control? Why is it important? The more map control your teammate has, the more info you have on the enemy team. Because if you guys take up more space on the map and you don't see any enemies, that means you know exactly where the enemies are trapped on the map. And that also means more enemies have to guess where you guys are on the map because they have less info. And so pushing out a B main, for instance, on Ascent with a Sova Dart lets us know that by a process of elimination, if no enemies are there, they have to be towards mid or A, okay? You pinch them. And again, having all parts of the map covered on the defender side or CT side lets your team avoid leaving gaps in your defense and getting pinched and having more parts of the map covered on the attacker side or T side lets your team avoid getting flanked by enemies if a four to five man hit doesn't work out. So this is a bit of an older example because Chamber has two teleports, uh, but this shows the importance of map control. So we have two on B, one towards mid and two towards A. So this is a this is a two, one, two setup. So when I re refer to these numbers, that's what it means. If, the, if it's like a three, zero, two setup, that means there's three towards B, zero towards mid, and two towards A, got it? Okay. So we have Jets that's about a peak, Owen's playing on Cat, uh, Chamber's fighting mid with maybe an AWP, and it looks like Ren is about to push out a B main with a Sova Dart. So once the round starts, we get a drone from Silva. People are running in. Jets hears a drone and see and spots it. Maybe gets tagged. Omen also hears a bunch of footsteps. Silva darts B main. And since Ren is pushing out, he knows, okay, like I can just leave B if no enemies are there. Chamber's still spotting top mid just in case someone also peeks and, and to see if it's going to be like maybe a mid split like that. Okay. But no, he doesn't see anyone. Or Omen says he hears a bunch of them towards A. So this was when he could do like map wide teleports, but he'd probably be sh like rotating over. Maybe Silva can cover mid and he can go cat. Or in this instance, if Silva is going to go CT, then Chamber can also just flank like this and pinch. Okay. But in this case, he's already guarded. Rain is out clears all the tiles. So we know that mid and B is completely empty. So by process of elimination, they're all towards A. We got that smoke, dash with a dart, with a blind, blind, okay, perfectly timed. Hooray, but they just left the site. Um, just play retake. So now chilling, chilling, and on bomb tap, okay, is when the defenders can start the retake. Again, this doesn't happen very often in ranked because it's really hard to be coordinated in a ranked game. But this is like I'm just showing the most ideal scenario of what you can do. So if the attacker taps the bomb, that means there's at least one less person on site who has their gun out to fight. Okay, so this is when Sova can drone out, allowing the chamber to peek heaven with the drone. Okay, essentially he's trading the drone. And then on top, if they close the door, Omen can blind, Jet can get out. The trades happen, Jet kills, you know, Jet kills Reyna. And then, um, you know, Omen was still planting. Maybe we get the kill on Jet. Omen also kills Sova because he's blind. Uh, Omen trades out the Jet. And then you guys can pinch the guy here. Okay, and notice how... Again, it's we're collapsing on the site. So the Reyna who pushed out of tiles blinked. He hits the trip. Okay, so now the chamber has to go back 
And even if the Reyna dies, he's now isolated from the rest of his teammates who are fighting on site during the retake. And so you guys all uh, kill the people on site. And then here in this scenario, the smoke's probably faded. So notice how during the retake, you can re-smoke uh, a main. And then once it's faded, you can smoke the bomb, okay? So this way, the guy has to peek out. And once he's spamming the smoke, the guys who are on site can know exactly where he's shooting from and then get the trade, okay? But if he's smoked out like this, then he can just spam the bomb for free. But if you smoke the bomb, then he has no idea where you're diffusing the uh, spike spike from. And if it's also smoked off like this, if it's a different agent, like Arena or Jet, they can easily smoke, like peek out of the smoke and then dash back in, right? Right? So you don't want that to happen. That's why you want to smoke the bomb. And so that was just a quick intro. But now when it comes to looking at the macro to really understand it well, you have to understand the zones of control. There is the opening zone, which is highlighted in green right here. And this is a space that's contested three seconds into the spawn barrier dropping. And there's the intermediate zone or the neutral zone, as others like to call it. And this is a space between the opening zones and the site. So this is like the new, like a neutral space that both the attackers and defenders can fight for. And then there's a final zone, um, aka the site. And within the site too, I've marked it green, yellow, and red as a front, mid, and back site. And there's also off site too. Okay, so there's the front site, mid site, back site. All right. And depending on the phase of the round you're in is going to determine how you're going to fight for each of these zones. And whatever happens in each of these zones are also going to dictate what happens during the mid round and late round and during even the post punt. So I've broken down each of the phases of the round and what happens in each of these phases for the different zones of the map. So I made a little uh, time chart up here during the pre round. This is before the round starts. You have 30 seconds to buy up, get into positions, plan out the round. And then this is the early round. This is when you start fighting for the opening zones mid round this is like this can last anywhere from zero seconds all the way to 45 seconds uh and then late round this is when um like people gotta pick where where to go essentially for playing the spike and uh, the end five seconds you have five seconds left to either plant the bomb or try to play for time uh and then uh, afterwards is a post plant okay but for now this is before the bomb even goes down so during the pre-round or phase zero i like to call it is a planning stage so for attackers you want to figure out whether you guys want to split push five man push do a four zero one push fake etc and you're trying to predict the defender setup uh and depending on the setup you're trying to determine what kind of push you want to do or maybe you guys want to default there's a lot of different uh, ways to go about it you're looking at their ultimates you're looking at their econ you're looking at a lot of different factors but this is what happens for the attackers for defenders you're deciding whether or not you guys want to play for stall uh you want to isolate duelists uh you want to delay the plant retake on tap etc this i would honestly say that some of these things can happen also like after the bomb goes down okay but ideally you come up with this plan even before the round starts because sometimes the attackers might just do something really quickly but with their ultimates and you might be caught off guard so even for defenders look at the ults available what the previous round tendencies were and so you can choose okay are we going to contest the opening zones or are we going to give that opening zone up and then play retake give up the site play retake because they got a lot of scary ults and that's like a free kill that i'm giving them whereas if i at least stay alive then we might have a better chance of winning that round so isolating duelists might be um like jet dashes in but then you throw your smokes down molly's down so there's only jet on the site and you guys kill her off delaying the plant so if you hear the spike uh being tapped you might brim ult right away instead of saving it you might silver ult right away instead of saving it um retake on top was the example that i showed you guys in ballot plan so that all happens during the pre-round so that at least people are on the same page about what you guys are at least trying to do and then the early round or phase one this is where fighting for the opening zones happens and this is all about information at the highest level of valorant it's all about information actually how much information you can gain from the enemy in the most cost effective way while also denying the most amount of information from the enemy team okay and so during the opening zone some things you can do let's say as as defenders is let's say you're playing on bind and the attackers like to take b long with a sky dog okay if you don't break that sky dog then that sky dog gets to clear all of b long all of octagon and some parts even onto the site and you guys just gave that information out for free so what you can do to counter that as a defender is have some utility that you can use to counter that or break that sky dog early on which forces the attackers have to use more of their utility earlier on to get the neutral zones even before they get to use utility onto the site okay and 
it's really important for you to understand why certain parts of the map are more important to contest than others at the start of the round because certain parts of the round can also give you so much more map control and information on the other team if you get it at the start. So an example of that would be Haven on A main. I would always ask students, what do you think is the most important part of the map to contest? But a lot of people actually, even immortal players would tell me it's mid, okay? For maybe good reasons, because it, it might pull defenders from A towards B, uh, because now you're threatening the possibility of doing this, you know, doing a split push onto C. Uh, there's a lot, right, that can happen. But if you don't, get control over a main there's a lot of things that can happen okay so this is probably going to be broken down a lot in the haven class so i don't want to go too much into it but if like the enemy can like dart this at the start and you guys don't break it then they have all the information in the world that you guys are not going a and the only place you guys are going is mid and c okay and if you guys don't contest the space at all one guy could push up let's say like hold this off angle okay and the other teammate can just leave and now you have four players stacked towards c and b right this is just what happens in high elo and so even if you guys decide to crunch uh like b site or go garage or C. Now this player that pushed up has a fast flank into B, into garage, and into C long, okay? They can go anywhere. And if you guys decide, okay, yeah, let's just get mid control first. So we pull defenders towards mid, okay? Yay, we did that. Now A should be weak. There should only be one player. Yeah, but look at where this one player is positioned. He is super far up. And so now by the time you guys are able to take back long or go short, this guy gets really early info playing this off angle. He might get a kill or two. And not only that, but by the time your team is able to scale up short and long, look, this other player is now already back on A. This guy's probably back on A too. And this guy also gets an early start to rotating over towards A. These guys can even decide to fast flank you guys too. So this is, this is something that people don't think about, okay? But if you can understand, okay, based on what well, happens in the opening zones it can really dictate the outcome of the rest of the mid round the late round and even the post point so here if attackers actually do manage to contest a main so in higher elo lobbies you'll see a smoke like this um you often see jet smoking this cross or cypher caging this cross too it's all to threaten the possibility of you guys actually going down short and so it actually forces people to stay on a okay and they don't get as early info so what i like to do again this is counter what people like to do to get control over these opening zones. If they like to smoke this cross a lot, if they like to cypher cage this a lot, then as Jet, I might peek short really quickly with an op, okay, to get this line. Because if they just smoke this and they don't come back, again, I'm having the same effect as getting really early map control for this whole area of the map now, okay? That line. But okay, let's say they force me off. I have to play here because I get smoked off. They're darting this, you know, maybe they're they're dogging or droning short, okay? And so now this forces defenders to play back. And so now these guys have no idea. Do we actually have to rotate towards A? Maybe one guy will go here, okay? Because you guys are making a lot of noise. This guy's gonna shift over. And generally it's like an Omen or KJ playing C or garage with like one turret okay but at this point one player cannot hold both garage and c and so just by applying pressure a main you guys have also manipulated the enemy's rotations so that at least it becomes easier to take one part of the site all right so that was just the early round okay and during the early round too as a, there's attacker and defender defaults defaults are great to hold chokes together with teammates to first of all gain info and notice i emphasize together because it is terrible if you just go by yourself and die that is the worst thing that can happen because you're losing a big chunk of the map that you were getting information on and now you have to worry about okay like shoot i just died the enemies know i died by myself they could just be pushing up and taking that space too so you have to go back and re-clear it you guys lose utility that you could have used for the round etc etc and so your primary goal on a default, especially for attackers, I guess defenders too, but especially for attackers, is to gain info on where defenders are playing on each side, baiting utility, okay? And then getting picks. So baiting utility so that you have less util to deal with when you're taking the site and getting picks. One for one trades, guys, like this is a big, big, big rule of thumb. One for one trades always favor the attacker or like 99% of the time favor the attacker and Valorant, okay? If you think about the map, okay? In a two, one, two setup, if there is a four to five man rush on a site, on a scent, remember like the Valor plant with the jet, if that jet dies in that scenario, 
solo peeking and she doesn't even get a kill. Okay, let's say she does get a kill. It doesn't matter because there's four other people still alive on the attacking side running into the site. That means there's only one other person on A to hold down anything. And if that person does something silly too and dies, well, pretty much the round's over. It's going to be really hard for three people to retake the site when you guys lost so much site control, okay? And so that's why, hey, like, it's okay. I got my one. No, that's really bad because you still lose a ton of map control side control the whole reason why like even in counter-strike guys if you if you play counter-strike the ct side would have worse guns and their setup was still really expensive because they had they always had the advantage of attackers not knowing where the defenders were playing on the site okay and so you're pretty much giving up that advantage if you just peek by yourself and die okay so don't just try to get picks a lot of people say oh let's just work picks and then try to figure something out <laughs> that that is really really bad okay if you are going to work picks, then you need to be methodical about it. Like pair up with someone, um, use your utility in a smart way, but don't just go out there without a plan. Okay, so we talked enough about the early round. Let's talk about the mid round. This is where you're making decisions around the gathered information from the early round. So attackers, you're trying to identify what's weak side or strong side. As in on the Haven example, if we made a lot of noise on A, we heard, we saw Sova droned, we saw jet peaking and then now we're also hearing a flash from a breach or whatever okay as an example there's three players on a that means the two of them are either on b or c but that means neither of them can hold all three lanes because there's c long there's garage and there's b those are three lanes that attackers can enter through but two people cannot hold it by themselves so that is weak side all right then let's go back and hit weak side that's what we want to do during the mid round um and you're also thinking about what utility is up what utility is down and for defenders you're asking yourself which side of the map do we notice activity okay do we early rotate do we anchor and do we push out so when i'm talking about the lanes let me help you guys visualize it too there's one two three four five lanes to enter the site so if defenders manage to get a main control and we get line of sight into this area you're eliminating the possibility of an, of an attacker taking this one lane unless they have like an omen tp or whatever and so that's why like a cypher cage or smoke is really good because now you're opening up the possibility of you guys taking this extra lane, okay? But again, if three people manage to get on, like three people rotated over to A, then like this here, then two players cannot hold all three lanes at once. I mean, this guy can play this angle, but again, like he's playing his life at that point. He's just gonna die, get traded if you guys all flood in. So this is identifying weak side versus strong side. And so in this case, if you don't want to get screwed over by attackers rotating back to your site, you wanna get early information. So ideally, this this guy can at least get into like a position like this. You can hear everything that's happening in their spawn, okay? So getting into like deeper positions into enemy territory is gonna help you at least get that early information. So your teammates can also like rotate back by the time the enemies are hitting C again or garage again, and you can catch them off guard too, okay? Pretty useful stuff.